Yeah. Hi, Rob. Yeah, can you hear me, mate? Can you hear me okay? Kia ora. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I forgot my um my little brush to go on the screen and then change Robert into me. So <laughs> Robert got connected. So now you have me. So thanks for your patience and thanks for joining us. And then you guys are representing in the future. And Um, but Tash, let's start with you. Can you um, just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, kia ora. So I'm um, Tina Koto Katoa. Uh, ko Natasha Kimpaho or Taku Tainuan and Natasha Kimp. Uh, no na rauru in Ati Tu Fadi Toa mina iwi o Mokai Patia ke Taiha Piaho. So I'm Taku Tainuan or Tash Kimp, as most know, people know me by, and um, my iwi or my tribes. Uh, Nā Rauru and Tu Whare Toa and the many uh, hapu and taihape. So kia ora from, um, I'm, I'm actually here in um, Tamaki Makoto or Auckland, New Zealand. So kia ora. Awesome. Kia ora. Thank you for joining us. And Joe Day, the mayor of Ichuka, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, my name is uh, Joe Day. Uh, I live in a place called Moama. Um, Moama in Ichuka, it's a little border town on the Murray River. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, just pleased to link in with you. And good to see you, Jalene and Sister Charlene and Shailene. And, uh, yeah, and, and also, again, hello to Tash. Good to see Rob but, and earlier Jean. But just pleased to be with you. And, uh, yeah, just with myself, uh, yeah, just uh, <laughs> not for me. I know, I was just teasing. <laughs> He's the governor. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess I'll just stay in. Go ahead, Rob. Well, hey, you know, uh, I don't know what happened, got bumped out, but I, I did hear your introductions, and, and I'm glad that everyone's getting an opportunity to meet two people that we really uh, look up to and that we feel, feel real privileged to uh, be able to connect to. And uh, just glad that you're both here. But, you know, I just want to get right into it because, um, you know, when I look at even our state, Arizona, uh, in the United States, I look at the numbers of what's happening and I look at the COVID numbers. And, you know, of course, a lot of people look at these numbers and, and the, the, the one particularly they fear of is that death one. Australia, you know, when it comes to per million of population, is uh, three in New Zealand when it comes to a per million per population is two. Just in our state alone, it's much, much higher in, in the 50s, which means uh, not only is the spread in your countries very low, but the death rate is also very, very low. And so the first question is, what are, what are you, what's happening over there? What are you guys doing that seems to be really working for, for your country? And maybe Tosh, you want to start? Yeah, sure. So in, in New Zealand and Aotearoa, you know, we're very lucky. We have a great Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, and uh, she took she took action very early in our country. And uh, four weeks ago, she declared um, a level four, which is a lockdown here for New Zealand. So our whole country is locked down. We're actually currently uh, all in our own homes in our own bubbles, there are no, there's no school, no uh, universities. People are working remotely. Businesses have been shut down. 
there's um, only essential services operating in our country, and that's hospitals, you know, police, fire departments, um, supermarkets. Um, it's the only place you can go to or to health centres. So you can go and see your GP or your doctor, uh, the hospital. But though we are all um, encouraged now to stay in our home, so the, the messages are stay home, stay safe, save lives. And um, our borders are closed as well. So there is no travel into New Zealand or out unless it's been uh, organised by the government to get New Zealanders or um, New Zealand citizens, residents home. Um, there is also no travel across New Zealand. So, you know, you might want to go for a Sunday drive, you know, from Arizona to over to Las Vegas and Nevada. We're not allowed to do that. <laughs> and um, so we're all at home except if you're an essential service, such as places like the Marae, Manurewa Marae, so myself and Paparangi. So we work for Manurewa Marae. Also with our young people that we brought over to Grand Ron, um, they are also an essential service to Kaho Tarangatahi and we've all been redeployed to provide welfare support for our communities, for our whānau rangatahi. So that's the state of New Zealand. Next week, the government is going to make another decision to whether or not we reduce and come down to the to the next level, of level three, where they might allow schools to open and start some form of small gatherings, no more than 10. I guess for us in New Zealand, why our death rates are so low is because we have put a stop to that community transmission by being by being encouraged to stay home. And for a place like Auckland, you know, we're 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 you know what the biggest city in in New Zealand, and I guess our fear is, especially for our um, Māori and Pacific communities, that if we go back out into normal day to day life, that community transmission will increase. And it may be quite detrimental for us, especially our communities, because we are uh, in the poverty line. You know, it's our families that are losing jobs, their jobs are no longer. So when we locked down, people became unemployed. And um, there's some hard times here in our country, even though we have low death rates. Yeah, that's that's where we are in, in New Zealand. Wow. Wow. That you know, when, when you're talking about like uh, we're at different, you're at different levels. We might go to this level. One thing is just going through my my head. It's just that to have that knowledge of uh, of uh, you know where your government is keeping the uh, citizens informed so much that you know, that you know the local system, you know where you're at, and you know what you're working toward. You know, uh, because one of the things that when you have that information, it helps keep the fear. Don't don't you find that? Uh, uh, being more informed helps keep the fear down? Yes, definitely. And it's our role as health workers, health providers, to ensure we provide very clear, uh, correct messages to our families, to our whānau. And it's our role to, to keep calm and to, and to encourage calmness across our families. So um, we play vital roles in ensuring those messages are correct to families. But, you know, it is a scary time, especially for our old people here in, here in Aotearoa where they've been told to stay home and then they've got nothing else. That, you know, they can't go out. They can't go and buy their groceries. They may not have family with them. So even with staying home and the restrictions, it has, there have become other social issues within our communities. Mm. Awesome. Um, Joe Day, um, what's, what, what about Australia? What's happening uh, over there? How are you guys? Uh, like I said, you know, the numbers say it all that you're doing an incredible job over there, uh, the citizens and the leadership. Uh, what kind of things do you see that are making your, uh, uh, your response to this work so well? I think one of the Rob, one of the things that the response been well is the the communication. You know, fortunately for us, particularly in the state of Victoria, we have ATCHOs, which are Aboriginal community controlled health organisations. So the communication through the health um, department, through the organ community, just the message has been put out. So most 
particularly for the indigenous community, shutdowns across the state and across the nation. But I, I think um, just the response by the government and the support that it's given uh, and uh, some of the things that they implemented early, you know, uh, you know, just in stores and restricting movements for people. And But, you know, there's a simple message in there, you know, just catching on what you said about fear, you know, and, you know, fear is not the answer to it, but there was a simple message that the Indigenous communities we were using was stay safe, yeah. stay well, stay home. You know, just tell them, oh, stay home, you know, keep safe, stay home. That's the best way to, you know, until things run. So don't go to work. And there was a lot of things that restricted to, to be done. And uh, just for instance, just even yesterday, uh, instance like uh, things that we take, you know, for sorry business. Um, it's really impacted the community on that, but at the same time, you know, the same thing, there's restrictions around that, the amount of people that are, can attend sorry business and just the whole range of things, but that's that's what it, um, that's what has to happen. And it's not only with that, but, you know, they've been closing yeah. places down, but there's too many people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, just being proactive on that and, yeah, no, and people are um, acknowledging that. So uh, we're pretty fortunate that uh, that's happened. And uh, and I suppose the, yeah, being such a big country and really states and borders have shut other things out and really maintained things. And you know, so we're fortunate in, the, in that respect. I think we it could be another four weeks. They're talking about a vaccination, some other things. And, yeah. But I, I tend to think, you know, just for myself personally, that it's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what good mm -hmm. can come out of it. There hasn't been, a, like you said, a lot of death, but there is a serious in it. But, um, you know, as a community, as a, even as a person, as a family, you know, uh, what good mm -hmm. is coming out of it rather than looking at all those things. And a lot of them, the essentials we're missing out, but the important thing is, what I was saying is, hey, do you know something? And for a period of time, families are home together. <laughs> you know, it's their home. There's things that they haven't done together at their home. And the communication with people, uh, even now, I um, you know, find that uh, communication, whether it be streaming or a phone call, checking up yeah. with each other other than Facebook, uh, is a reality. People are not actually caring about checking up on family and those things that, become important in this you know as a well-being of community and family and that's why i said the best thing you can do is stay arms and that's the best way to stay well and uh and to be safe uh, but continue to keep you know in, in communication uh, with each other and particularly what the government's putting in place so uh yeah so you know hopefully um yeah yeah we're back so i'm back <laughs> back a little bit of normality but but uh, I didn't get the opportunity for ever you know just to, we come yeah, to realize yeah, the things yeah. that are important a lot of what, what, what you so, see you know, what you're talking there you yeah. know uh, just about those things within our communities and you know when you're talking about not being able to participate in sorry business you know what, what he's talking about is about grieving for uh, lot, when we lose people but in, in, in our in all of our indigenous communities, yeah. you know, that's something that is new to us. You know, how do we, how do, you know, how do we say our goodbyes? How do, how do we do that? And these are things that, you know, are being addressed right now. And, um, you know, and when we look at how do we handle the situation, I see a lot of people are looking to traditional medicine. They're looking to traditional ceremonies, rituals, uh, what about yeah. there with the, you know, with the Yoda Yoda or with the, the Mari, you know, what are some of these traditional uh, practices or medicines that you're looking toward to help cope with uh, what's happening? Oh, well, well, it's the whole thing about communication, you know, uh, and you're going to be mindful too, even through a community organization or the grapevine. One of the things that I've come into respect and,
and more so because uh, even with my own father, mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother wouldn't allow my father's name to be spoken for a month. So just the communication of a person's name. There's, um, I've seen certain things on Facebook where people are, there's sites for, for sorry business and to let people go, but, but I'm also, like you're saying, the, the aspects of uh, how do you, you know, how, how, do, how do you do that, particularly in respect to family? And it turns out, you know, and uh, yeah. So um, other other communities are doing that. Uh, remote communities up in the North Queensland, where where you were, they were given the exemption. They were allowed to have eighty people that are sorry because it was a, a significant elder, you know, and a lot of people wanted to be there. So they made a provision for that, and I don't know how it went, but but. Cultural ways have to yes. be, have to be respected, so, and, and 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 people are doing them even now. You know, when there's different ways and cultural aspects to do that in, in yes. the midst yes. of uh, the epidemic, but you still still have to uh, allow you know uh, cultural laws and certainty around respect. To, you know, what can be shown, streamed, and people's name being identified and a whole range of things, unless it's, you know, administrated through the through the family and community. So, and, you know, that's been respectful, but certainly with the epidemic, it's, it's certainly, uh, mm -hmm. I know our communities, and in the wider communities, there's a real um, reflection going on with this uh yeah, you know, it really yeah, shows us how yeah. vulnerable we are. You know, when we, when we get the opportunity to evaluate yeah. what's important, you know, uh, so uh, it really puts us all, I, I believe, on notice and, uh, you know, about the things that, yeah. that are important and the uncertainty, uh, what's, what's ahead. So, you know, for me, and that's not a fear factor, but how do you deal yeah, with that? That's something I'm and, sure that uh, a lot of us with, have to really yeah, look deal at with and, and, and figure that out, you know. Tosh, uh, yeah. we have you get messages that you're in and out. Can you hear me right now? I can't say. Yeah. Okay, maybe some technical issues. And for those of you who join us, we have Joel Day from Australia, Tosh Camp. Uh, she's from, uh, uh, from New Zealand. I'm trying to – I always have trouble – Atiroha, I think so. Uh, well, I, I still need work on saying that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we have uh, Tasha might have uh, frozen on us. Um, but, you know, just want to say to uh, our, our, our people that are joining us, the reason we have Joe and Tasha on with us uh, today is because uh, these relationship buildings that we've been able to put together with them and uh you know they've become a big part of native wellness institute and they've we've gone over there they've come to us they've been at some of our camps yeah. and and uh so we just really love this relationship that we have with indigenous people all over and so so joe uh, i want to thank you for coming on and you know give, yeah and, and give no, our support certainly. and love yeah. to everyone uh, over there, you know, you know how much uh, we really yeah. care about uh, your mob over there. <laughs> uh, and thanks for joining yeah. us tonight, and uh, we'll yeah. be saying lots of good energy and prayers yeah. to your way, and do the same for us. Yeah, and I just like you know before you go, and I think that's the important thing, and you know for the moment, and exactly like you said, we look to the cultural ways or practices and. And particularly our beliefs in that, and in a time like this, yeah, they come for the forefront. And it's it's um, look, uh, I've been home for nearly that's a long time for you five weeks, <laughs> and I think I put on two stone. <laughs> but the important thing is, what do you do at that time? You know, and what you do at the time, and. You know, there was a time there was no TV, no Facebook, anything else. But the time, mm. what you had was with the creator. You spent time with him. 
there were certain, as you, you know, um, Brother Charlie and, you know, uh, tail feathers, you know, yeah. with the sweat, you know, that ritual sweat, but also the prayer and the fasting and the, those things, uh, you know, and for me, prayer is important for me, you know, and, uh, but it's reflecting on all those things and they're important things and, and that's what I love about the Native Wellness Institute and the people that I meet, you know, those hold on to those values and keep, you know, and yeah. So, you know, continue to do the things that, uh, that matter. And uh, I suppose the communication thing is ensuring that we're lifting each other up in prayers, communities, tribes and nations. And we continue to do all that. We'll be right. We'll be safe. We'll be well. And the only thing we have to do, <laughs> Rob, is stay home. <laughs> yeah. Until the, yeah. Until the doors are open, so to speak. And, but God bless you, mate. I'm just pleased to see you and uh, love you and uh, and uh, just wish you well. And yeah, yeah we'll get through this easy. Well, thanks, mate. <laughs> All right. Take we'll care. see you, bud. Thanks, you yeah. Take care, you know. that, that was great. That was great talking to Joe and to Tosh. I want to thank you for joining us. Sorry the connection didn't work out for us, that we were able to keep you on. Uh, but... Um, you know, when we're, we're, we're trying to work with this technology, we're trying to do the best that we can. Um, but now what we're going to go to, we're going to go to, uh, let me see what's happening here. Kalina. Oh, I think we got Tosh on back. To All right. Best. Well, I'm going to let our producer, by the way, I want to give um, a big shout out. Uh, those of you know that know, know the background of how this works, we have Shailene Joseph, who is really Kalina. works tirelessly to make this happen, especially as we're live. So right now, we uh, she's working, coordinating, you know, to get hey. people back in, to get people going, so um, to make this happen. So, um, yeah, I, I don't see anything on my screen, and I can't hear anything right now. Um, so what I see a thing that says Kalina is live, I'm just going to go with it. And I'm sorry, I can't hear you right now. Kalina. I can't so hear you at all. I'm just going to turn the time over to you <laughs> and we'll see if we can get this work, uh, going again. So everyone, you're going to enjoy. This is a tremendous talent, beautiful, beautiful voice, beautiful, beautiful songs. And please enjoy. I can't hear you at all. All right, I hope everyone can hear me. I'm not too sure um, how it's going on your end, but I definitely wanted to just take the time to say thank you for the invitation from Native Wellness Institute and also just really grateful to be a part of the Indigenous 20-somethings project as well. Um, I've been able to share a few songs already through some of NWI's Power Hours and our online concerts with Kahara Hodges and Jordan Cocker as well. So it's just an honor to be here with you on a Friday night rather than a lunchtime hour. But um, I know that we're all just doing what we can to stay safe in these times and um, it's really awesome to hear from our relatives across the oceans. And um, I wanted to actually share, um, I don't know if Joe Day is still listening or if he can hear, but um, it's really good to to see you. We haven't met before, but I have um, so much love in my heart for our Aboriginal and um, Torres Strait Islander relatives. I was actually able to travel last year to Australia. I performed at two music festivals over there. Um, and I was hosted by Bad Apples Music and a lot of really, really incredibly talented musicians um, coming out of Australia right now. And uh, so I wanted to share this verse I actually wrote while I was down there. I haven't released it yet, but I just felt like 
the an appropriate time to send some love down that way. So people geographical, something systematical from Turtle Island to the land of the Gadigal. That's that social capital. Moving international, wander through a wondry as I introduce myself, Kalina Tita Soakwabs Chud. I come in peace, it rolls off my tongue. Protocol and tactical, plus I brought baskets full of Salish smoked salmon, hand it to the bad apples. Time immemorial, my people been here since time immemorial. Yo, people been here since time immemorial. My people been here since time immemorial. <laughs> uh, so again, just a lot of love to the people in Gadigal territory and in Wawandri territory and people in Ateora. And my love is with y'all. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, I did want to share a song in my indigenous language. Uh, again, my name is Kalina Lawrence. I am Suquamish. I come from Suquamish or what some know as the Port Madison Indian Reservation in Suquamish, Washington. And uh, we are Soquab Shoot Seed speaking people. Um, the, the region of Coast Salish folks are known as Twil Shoot Seed speaking people. And I'm very honored to have a song that I've been able to co-write with one of my very dear friends. And it's called Us Haliti Tolshutzid. And that in one translation is Lashid is Alive. And I just want to acknowledge that during this time where we are in our homes and we are practicing self-care and we are um, holding tight to our traditions of our ancestors who have been here since time immemorial and who have also survived through many scenarios like this one. Um, a lot of people are learning our languages, we're incorporating it into our lives at home, and I've been able to write music um, as a way to help me learn and preserve and encourage those of us um, who are still in the places of our ancestors um, to keep those um, teachings alive through our languages. So there's a lot of incredible speakers out there who are doing great, amazing work online right now through technology to help us through this time. So I'm just going to share this and uh, wanted to give a lot of love to everybody who's tuned in tonight on this beautiful Friday evening. And uh one thing about this song as well is the first song that I produced myself and I've produced it on my phone using a really awesome app called Figure. Um, it's also one I learned of when I was in Australia. One of my friends down that way told me about it. So he's really encouraged me in my journey to self-production and making my own music in that way. But um I made the beat for this song on my phone and then I have just uh, taken it with me and and have been able to perform it in a lot of different spaces. Uh, there's a call and response that usually happens with the audience and um, I know that I can't hear you and you can't hear me, but you're welcome to sing along with me during the chorus. And uh, the call and response is us ched chalup, and the response is us walach chal. So I'm asking, how are you folks? Us ched chalup, and you say us walach chal. That's the chorus. So again, um, you will catch on. Don't worry about pronunciation and not being able to say it perfectly, but I would really love for all of us to come together and sh and sing from wherever we are on the other side of that screen. So um, I'll let you know uh, when you can shout it out with me. And uh, again, I'm asking, how are you folks? And your response is, we are strong. And I hope that's true for all of you. Uh, so this is us haliti to shoot seed. Us hate to love, us will love, us will love, us hate to love, 
As wallah chat, as wallah chat, you wallah chat. All your teeth wall, your teeth were too tight. I thought to dark chat. Pied head of oak actors, as the pieds as a pack Now you guys ready? As Hitchala, as well, as Hitchala, as well, as Hitchala, as well, 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 as as well, chat, as well, chat, you will laugh, chat, quack will lick, abba lick, blow back, oh, slur hill, she do suck, or tell all chat do suck, or hat, he slur hill, as holy chad, hat, he slur hill, buck with teeth, see, yeah, hat, he slur hill, I see, spell beef, chat, what's a da to shoot. As Hali, as Hali, Ti to shoot, Ti to shoot, Ti as Hali. As Hedgella, as Wallach, Chad, as Hedgella, as Wallach, Chad, as Hedgella, as Wallach, Chad, as Wallach, Chad, Slew Wallach, Chad, as Hedgella, as Wallach, Chad, as Hedgella. As well, chat, as Hedgella, as well, chat, as well, chat, you will chat. Yay! Hot. Good job, you guys. Um, I know I can't hear you on my phone, but I know I could hear you uh, from your house, <laughs> wherever you are. And um, I just wanted to say again, uh, thank you to Native Wellness Institute. Uh, my name is Kalina Lawrence on all social media platforms, C-A-L-I-N-A, -A, last name Lawrence. And I wanted to mention to all of you who are watching, I have a sale right now for all of my merchandise. My hoodies are $25. For those of you who are watching, you can check out on my website, kalinalawrence.com forward slash merch, and you input the discount code flash sale, and you'll get hoodies for $25. Um, this code is not posted anywhere. It's only for those of you who are tuned in right now. So if you would like to support my brand, um, head to my website, and uh, also please keep tuning in every single day at noon and uh, spending time with these good folks over at NWI. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. I was over here. I, I didn't know the words. I was just making up my own. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, how that you do it. <laughs> Thank that was you. Great. Thank you for coming on and joining us this evening. Of course. And again, uh, uh, Kalina Lawrence, look her up. Great yeah. deal on those uh, hoodies, t-shirts. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank see you. ya. We'll see ya. All right. Wow, that, that that was some great music. Got me going, feeling really good. Uh, just to give you a, a update, where you know we're like I said, whenever we try to do something on here using technology, sometimes uh, it doesn't go the way that we want it to, and we're really trying hard to bring Teresa on. Um, but we're struggling with that right now. 
and Teresa Cholia is just this wonderful uh, comedian, actress, and um, just want to give a shout out to her and all the work that she's been doing. Uh, I'm uh, so as we're waiting for that, um, I'm gonna ask Shailene and see if she can hear. Uh, Shailene, do we have Grandmama? Is Grandmama here? I call her Grandmama, but she's really Grandma. Is Grandma here? Um, but I hope that you're all having a great, a great uh, evening, and thank you for joining us here on the Native Wellness late night. And you know, when we the, the minute that we heard that we're going to go late night, that was some great, awesome news. Is, uh, because then we can hit a different crowd, get more people on, and, and to make that happen. Oh wow! I think Grandma's on with me. I can't, I, I can't hear everybody. Grandma. Sorry, Grandma, I can't hear you. Usually you're the one who can't hear me, but I can't, I can't hear you, Grandma. Hear um, but I'm going to go oh. ahead and turn it over to you, Grandma. Okay. Oh, welcome, right. welcome. Good to see you. It's all good to be here. I just want to say now that I can see. Oh, I couldn't see before like this. My eyes were all covered up. But now I could see. Hi! <laughs> I got a hairball. This, oh, you guys be quiet down there. I'm trying to do something here. I'm talking to all these people in the box. Shh, be quiet. Okay, now I'm back. So, I just want to say all oh, your peoples, welcome to the res. Yeah, here are those peoples out there. They're all protesting because they don't want to stay inside. They want, don't want to stay confined to a place. They want to do all those things because they say that their livelihoods and lives are being disinterrupted, you know. What us Indians have to say is, welcome to the res. Yeah, we're all on the res. I've said that stuff before. I just want to say a few things during this time while we're here. During this time, you learn things. You learn how to do things. Okay. So I made these my friends. I my friends. They're my spirit helpers. They're they say they call us sock monkeys. No, these are rabbits. This is Sebastian and this is Norman. They're my spirit helpers now. During this time. We all need someone to help us out, our spirit helpers. We can't do this alone. So if you're in the house by yourself, you can get make a spirit helper like this. Now I got to say something that might be kind of candid, that I know we had a sex talk earlier this afternoon. Holy, I had to take a nap after that. Holy, hey, Wes. When I tell you that you just create your own someone to hang out with, I don't mean something like that. Holy, oh, after that talk, oh, Jay West, spirit helpers, you got to make your spirit helpers like this. Just wanted to share that with you during this time that we're all on the res, being quarantined and all that stuff. Now I got to tell you too, that during this time when we're quarantined in there, our Indian foods are important to us, our native foods. Now look at this here. Salmon, jarred salmon. Oh, this is the best stuff. I gotta tell you what. Now after that sex talk, I gotta tell you this. Like you, this a tip from grandma. Now, if you want up river guy, you ladies, you take up river salmon. Take some of the salmon skins, put it put, put, right, right behind your ear. You want downriver salmon? Guy, get, get downriver salmon. Put a little bit on there, yeah. Oh, that's that stuff magic. Our Indian foods are real good. Yeah, I got to tell you that. And someone traded, and we trade during this time. We have this maple syrup I got some from a friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, but our Indian foods, one of my favoriteest foods is salmon heads. 
I can't tell you all. You put it in the pot, boil it up, put some vegetable balls in there. You can get some wild onions in there and wild asparagus in there. Put some seaweeds and rice in there. Oh, put some potatoes, all that stuff in there. And they all oh, taste so good. But I gotta tell you what, you know, the best part of it is oh, the cheeks and the eyeball. Yeah, the eyeball. You take that eyeball and you just like put it in your lips and then you like just put it in there. Oh, it tastes so good. Yeah, yeah, all those people out there, I bet you're just going, oh, hey, I got to try that. That's good. And then after that, you just take the eyeball and it's in your mouth and you roll it around in your mouth a little bit, get some juices, and then you just like bite into it and it just pops. It pops, holy, that eyeball pops right in your mouth. All the juices get all over in there. Holy, tastes real good. Oh, that our Indian food is so good. Oh, holy. Yeah, just that's that soul food, that spirit food for us during this time. I don't want to take up too much time, all you beautiful peoples. I got to share one more thing, though. We've been watching a bird's nest in our yard. Yeah, we got a bird's nest in our bushes. And we've been sneaking up there. There's five little eggs. Five little eggs. And they're just beautiful little birds that they're in our their little nest in there. And see, I'll show you right here. Look at that. Look, look at that. I got bone. Look at that little eggs in our yard holy yeah look at that and we're gonna have life you know during this time life will come back yeah if you just take some time to look around life is all over the trees life is sprouting up in the springtime the buds are coming alive on the the, the branches and the little the, the medicines are coming up through the earth and we just gotta look around the birds in the morning are singing all oh, and life and the sunshine is coming out and I tell you what that sun loves you that sun loves you as much as the trees love the sun the flowers love that sun oh and the waters everyone all things out in nature we love each other yeah yeah but uh, yeah so it's just this, this, this time, this quarantine time. You just got to take some time out there and just look around. There's life all over the place. And the greatest life that's around, you look in the mirror. Yeah, that's the most beautiful life right there. I know, I know. I used to not like myself. I was sour, but no. You look in the mirror and you just give yourself a high five. Oh, yeah. And just say, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, yeah. Big life there. And I got to tell you something. I have, I, I, I'm going to make a prediction that after this quarantine, everybody is stuck inside and all this and that, you know, that what's going to happen. Like nine months down the road, we're going to get lots of life. Yeah, all those little quarantine babies are going to come out. I know, I know, holy, just like rabbits. Maybe that's why I made these spirit animals. Maybe that's why I made these spirit animals, these spirit rabbits. Holy, oh, yeah, that's because there's no rabbits and spirit rabbits. They got to help, help that life. Holy, yeah, nine months later on, there's going to be lots of life coming out there. Gee whiz, holy. I got and now I got go now. I got to turn it over to my 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 nephew, Robert Johnston. That guy, beautiful. He's beautiful. Holy, look at that smile. He has beautiful smile. And ladies, he's a good one. He even has all his teeth. Yeah, he's got all his teeth. Okay, I got go now. You beautiful people. So remember, take care of yourself. Welcome to the res, everybody. All those people out there, yeah. So I'm gonna go, yeah. <laughs> Grandma. All right. It was great hearing from Grandma today. Uh, uh, 
we were, we, yeah, <laughs> we had, we struggled getting Teresa on today and, um, but we'll make it up. We'll, we'll get her back. And I know a lot of you tuned in to hear her beautiful stories, hear her beautiful jokes. And, uh, just ha she has a wonderful, uh, story as well. A wonderful healing story of, uh, uh, of what's been going on, but you know, just want to remind everyone, you know, one of the reasons that we're doing this and I uh, want to give a shout out to the Noise Foundation and to NICWA for promoting the, uh, uh, sponsoring this event. You know, this is a way for us to keep connected and, uh, and keep everything going well. So, you know, the question that I just want to share with all of you is as we start to really look at things is what am I doing for myself during this time? And it's a tough question because sometimes as people, we all, and especially as indigenous people, we're really good at putting others first. We're really good at looking at other people and focusing so much on taking care of others that sometimes we neglect ourselves. So a big question to you is what are you doing to take care of yourself? What are you doing to take care of this up here, your mind, your brain, what are you doing to take care of this, your heart, your emotions, your feelings? What are you doing taking care of this, the spirit and how we connect? What are you doing to take care of this body? You know, these are real serious uh, things that uh, come into question because as we prepare for what, you know, what may be the great shift for all of us, the great shift and the shift in how we think the shift in how we treat each other, the shift in how we ask for help, the shift in how we receive help, how we give help, uh, the shift in the how we eat, the shift in our daily behaviors, the shift in how we connect with one another. Uh, we there there could be uh, some uh, some so many of these different type of changes that we might see an end even to a handshaking or even just the public. Uh, hugging and stuff, you know, going up to people that we don't know. And so these are questions that we really have to really ask ourselves and, and how, and, and what are the lessons and teachings that we've learned for ourselves and where can we go to get more, uh, more wisdom, you know, where, you know, when we, when we start to look at, you know, what stores do we go to because they have certain foods? Well, who are the people, who are the elders, who are the teachers that we're going to because of the wisdom that they have and what they share? These are just things that we have to really start to think about and, 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 tru and truly look into. The one thing that we don't need anymore is fear. And again, this is something I shared in an earlier uh, thing that I have done, the Power Hour. You know, a lot of times we say the media gives us fear, gives us fear. Nobody can give you fear. You know, fear is your reaction to information, your reaction to the environment. This is why it's so important for us to look upon, look, look inside for our strengths. This is why it's so important for us to really open up, to, to put our minds in a different place. Because, you know, if something is really causing us fear, then it's what we are allowing ourselves to. It might, it might take us some time to learn how to shift that you know one of those things that can help i'm glad that you're joining us on here on facebook however sometimes we do spend a little bit too much time on facebook you know i look at a lot of people and their reaction of what's going on here with the coronavirus uh, um, same as like uh what you see as a res dog you know when you travel on the res in your car what does that dog do? It runs out right in front, barking at, at the car. And sometimes, you know, you almost you, you have to turn the car to avoid hitting them. They come right at it. It's like, what the heck are they doing? You know, coming running at a moving vehicle. You know, that's what's happening right now. There's a lot of barking and chasing things that really have no purpose or reason. That's the only and the only thing that it's doing is putting us more at risk because what we need right now isn't fear isn't emotion isn't even reaction that you know reactive behavior what we need right now is just this our minds you know we, we need to cognitively work our way through this we need to think about ourselves and our family in our community we need to think about what 
resources do I have right now and how do I use that? Uh, we need to stop predicting the future um, because we're not very good at it. We need to stop, move, uh, we need to move away from trying to look at people and figure, oh, they're lying or they're honest. You can trust them, not trust them because it really doesn't matter in the long run because, and also too, as history has shown us, we're really bad at doing that. Um, what we can control though is, and what you have been given that power from the creator to control is how you live your life. It's how you take care of yourself. It's how you live each day. And when you have control of that, you don't have to worry about what's being said on television. You don't have to worry about press briefings because you're taking care of yourself. The information comes to you. We have that. We And really, when you look at looking for something new, but it all comes down to the same thing, and that is to take care of yourself, the same rules of social distance, the same things about not touching your face, washing your hands. Those are staying the same here. But, you know, we got to live life with purpose, and our purpose has to be for the next generations. It has to be that no matter what we're going through, we're going to come out of this strong, but we're also going to come out of this strong-minded. We're going to be working at a different level how we think, and we have to promote that. And just like as you heard Joe Day from Australia share that, and just as you hear Grandma talking about it, and so many other people that are sharing, we're sharing the same information, and that is, this is a great time to retune what's going on up here. You know, um, it, you know, it's kind of like we're going to be going through a season if we haven't already started that season. And when we go through season, there's precautions. When you know that winter time is coming, there's precautions that you do with your cars or precautions that, you know, especially if you're going to be hitting a blizzard, things have to change. And what our thinking has to change. We had to prepare ourselves for that. And, you know, reading, listening, uh, letting go of things that just don't serve, serve you any purpose anymore, you know, and, and that's what we're really looking at is how do we move forward in a good way? How can I control how I move forward rather than react to what's given to me? That that's that's the big way that we had to reevaluate how we think and how we react to certain things. Um, but that's just my little spill here. Uh, you know, here on this beautiful Friday evening, we heard from Joe Day, we heard from Tosh Kim uh, coming from us indigenous communities across the seas. We heard from Grandma. We heard uh, Kalina with the beautiful songs. And I'm sorry, Teresa. I was really excited to hear from her. I actually uh, talked to Teresa earlier. We had a really good chat. And it was like, man, I can't wait for you to share your story. And uh, she has a really incredible story. And I don't think it's my job uh, to share that story with you. I think it's better to come from her. So we're hoping to find another way to bring her out to you and give the opportunity to be there. Um, but, you know, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, I see uh, taking a quick look, uh, you know, just get some shout outs to people who jumped on with us, you know, Izzy. Thank you, Izzy, for joining us there today. Charlotte, thank you for coming on. It's always good to see uh, Patty, uh, my cousin, Stephanie, you know, just great people, great people that come and join us. And, you know, whenever you come and join us, that's like a good medicine for all of us as trainers because we feel like we're getting that uh, positive energy that we usually get when we're in your communities and sharing with you. So uh, thank you for coming on. Um, I was actually going to pull out and while, while John was talking, uh, John, when Grandmama, I was about to say Jean and I said John, but when Grandmama was talking, I was actually going to put my own little Grandmama costume and join her when I came out. But like, it was a last second thought. I had my handkerchief ready to put in my head. I had this. I don't know what I was going to do with these, but I was going to bring them out for something. And then I don't know, but that didn't happen. But thank you, Grandma. Ma. It's good to see you. Everyone, have a beautiful night and have a beautiful tomorrow. Take care. Be safe. But oh.